Never seen this happen before. Uh, this is this is really good firewood though. If we go camping, this is great, great camp firewood. Let's see if I can start a fire. I got a little bit of hate or pushback for uh, talking about the the daredevil that died in, in Mesquite. And rightfully so. Looking back at it, I think I probably could have had a little bit more reverence when bringing up the topic. At the time, I was just, I'm in the middle of a road trip. I didn't have the kids with me, which I usually do when I go through Mesquite. So I was like, oh, this would be a good time. Add a little something to the video, pulled over, and it was getting dark and I knew that the lighting was getting bad. So I figured I, I was gonna, you know, try to try to make it quick but I could have done a better job especially I feel like I feel like I should have at least mentioned his name I do feel bad about that I walked around and I figured there was probably some sort of like plaque or memorial or something mentioning his name and honestly I I hadn't watched the the footage in forever I was kind of just going off of memory his name was Sherman Dwayne Laswell or went by Butch Laswell from Las Vegas born in 1958 died in 1996. I can't find any information if he had kids or a wife. Laswell attempted to jump over a 38 foot high pedestrian bridge by driving up a steep ramp on a Honda CR500 motorcycle. As he made the jump and became airborne, he was blown off course mid-air. Crosswinds and excessive speed pushed Laswell to the left of the landing ramp. Yeah, as I remember always, you know, them saying that the wind, the wind got him and pushed him, but he also, he over jumped it. Who knows if he would have been able to save it right out of it, if he would have lived, if he landed, you know, he, he would have landed probably like 10 feet to the bottom of the ramp and then, you know, hopefully it would have been okay, but I guess we'll never know. Laswell's closest friend blamed the wind for the failed jump. Laswell's manager contends the disaster resulted from a mechanical problem and strategic error. Laswell's trachea was crushed and his skull and chest were cracked among other internal injuries. Lieutenant Governor Lonnie Hammergreen, a noted brain surgeon and friend of Laswell, said he did not feel the paramedics responding to the crash provided adequate support to keep keeping Laswell alive. Hammergreen was in the crowd and was reportedly pushed away from Laswell's body by emergency personnel after the crash. Hammergreen rode with Laswell in the flight for life helicopter where he succumbed to his injuries. Yeah, that's, it's, it is really sad that if you think about it, like Butch Laswell died there in the streets of, of Mesquite to entertain the crowd, to bring attention and business to the, the businesses there. And they don't even have like a, a memorial set up for him or anything so looking back i do feel like i should have done a better job giving butch the recognition that he deserves and telling a story adequately with more reverence i tend to ramble and i i knew that the, the video was going to be long so i'm trying to be better about being precise and being quick with segments but looking back i could have at least said his name mentioned his name or looked up the video beforehand so that way i was telling the story adequately and not just going off of memory so you know i'm living i'm learning but the man was a legend, one of the last real daredevils. So rest in peace to Butch Laswell. Today is the day we're gonna be repairing Mason's 85. It's still busted up and broken from his crash. Mason is not broken anymore. Mason, come on in and say hi. Uh, how are you feeling? It's been six weeks since your uh, broken collarbone. You been feeling good? Yeah. You wanna thank everyone for the prayers and well wishes? Thank you. <laughs> All right, good job, Mason. Uh, quick mountain bike update. So when Mason got hurt, I sold his old mountain bike, anticipating that I would find something else. Sure enough, I did. I found this. This is a little bit smaller. It's got one sprocket in the front, so hopefully this uh, chain stays on a little bit better. It's got better brakes. I think it looks better too. Mason rode it once. I think that's a better fit for you, Mason. Yeah. I think that actually is a much better fit. Okay. Go now, go get him, go prove you right. We did one run uh, in Draper and unfortunately he got a flat tire. So we're gonna have to fix that. But how was your first run? Everything besides the big jump was good. Cause the big jump I got like super sketchy and then I had to hop off the bike. You had to ditch it in the air? Yeah, but 
Okay, YouTube, don't demonetize us. He's just showing us his, his bruise. Don't take this video down, YouTube. He's gonna be fine, he'll be okay. Oh, and by the way, on this bike, we got it for 300. They were asking 400, which I would have paid, but I didn't tell them that. I would totally have paid four, but I, I offered them three. They took it, and uh, yeah, so this one I think is better and cheaper. The other one, we paid four, and I sold it for 350. So, you know, so I'm nice sometimes. I get people deals. Never seen this happen before. Uh, this is this is really good firewood though. If we go camping, this is great, great camp firewood. Let's see if I can start a fire. You probably could with a lighter. I think I could start a fire with friction. Try not to get splinters, Mason. Might have already had. That's so wild, man. Oh my gosh. How did, how is it even? Dude, it went like all the way. That's one we solid piece of new, wood. We might need a new one. Wild. And next thing we need to do is figure out why Mason's throttle is jammed. Dude, why is everything on your bike so hard, Mason? How is this so stuck? Just getting the freaking dust cover off is hard. There, now it works. That's easy. Yeah, the gas should be off. Why don't you come fire it up and see? crash it starts better than it ever did well i well the choke was on i choked it but i just want to make sure the throttle's reacting the way it's supposed to the throttle feel okay yeah. all right just want to make sure the throttle cable and everything was working and not broken inside the carburetor or something so Still need new plastic. We're waiting for two things. One, we're trying to get a sponsorship to cover things like plastic. And also we're trying to figure out a sponsorship for graphics also. So hopefully very soon, new graphics and new plastic for Mason and Luke too. Luke needs it also. Today's tech tip comes from the comment section. It comes from Eric Brett, longtime commenter, viewer, supporter, and one time filmer on the channel. He says, please forgive me for being that guy. Uh, consider cutting Mason's bars down. He is unable to achieve attack position because his hands are too far apart. And then he goes on to say that what you do is you, you uh, put your fist together and measure elbow to elbow and that's your bar width. Interesting enough, we were at a training last year and the trainer was, was recommending one of the riders trim his bars. He said they're too wide. And the kid said, well, how, how much do I trim them? And he's like, I don't know, just, you know, so they're more like together. And then I said, what you do is you put your fist together and then uh, measure elbow to elbow, that's your bar width. And the trainer said, oh, okay. And then the next day he's like, hey, I went and measured my bars and it's exactly elbow to elbow. That's exactly what he had without even realizing it. So uh, Mason, he's had he's had it, he's had the bike a year. I say it's time we trim his bars. He's getting new grips. Now's the perfect time to do it. Mason, we need to measure your elbows. Yeah. Such a bad dad, I don't even know the length of my kid's elbows. Or his birthday, when's your birthday? I don't know. Hurry this up, come on. The way you do, go like this, yeah. go like this, 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 okay, and, then, <laughs> and then this. Um, 23, put your, put your elbows, or put your, yeah, okay. Two feet. Okay. 24, 24, 24 inches. Hey, I'm trying to film and do this at the same time. Leave me alone. Dude, 
31, almost 31. 24 inches, bar to bar for a 12 year old. Handlebars are 31. Luckily I'm a freaking math genius, so this will be really easy. So we got uh, the bar width of 35. 31, sorry. We got a bar width of 31. We, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide that in half. Equals 15 and a half. And then we take his elbows, which is 24, 24, and we're gonna divide that by half, and we get 12. And then we take 15 and a half minus 12 equals 3.5. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 3.5, and we gotta times it by two, to get seven. So we've got to take seven inches away from the bar. But remember, it's just, it's the bar's 360. So seven inches times 360 is going to be 2,000 to two more, almost close to 3,000. I don't know. Let's just swing it. He'll be fine. Uh, kids like these ODI lock-on grips. As always, thank you to everyone who shops at Rocky Mountain ATV using the link in our description. It's nice because it's like Christmas every month. We get a little bit of help out from uh, Rocky Mountain. We get a commission on whatever you buy. It's not much, maybe like 3%, maybe more than that. Maybe sometimes like 5%. It dep depends on the product, but every little bit helps. And sometimes it's cool because every once in a while someone goes and like buys a bunch of stuff and it actually is like oh cool a couple couple hundred bucks coming our way that we didn't even know about so thank you guys thank you for shopping at rocky mountain using our link so just barely going to fit barely maybe mm, those look really tiny for watching i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you smash that subscribe button smash that like button and peace out